And I would just like to welcome you. Uh, thank you for tuning in to our online service, wherever you're watching from. Uh, I want to just say how much I appreciate you, and uh, thank you for giving me uh, your time to just uh, to deliver this message. Uh, I want to speak today uh, about hope. Uh, hope is defined by the world, and then hope uh, that we have defined by God and his word. Uh, so the dictionary's definition of hope is a feeling of expectation and a desire for a certain thing to happen. A feeling of expectation and a desire for a certain thing to happen. Our biblical definition of hope is a confident expectation of what God has promised and its strength is in his faithfulness. I'm going to say that one more time. A confident expectation of what God has promised and its strength is in his faithfulness. Some very key differences. Uh, the first one, the actual dictionary definition of hope, uh, it's more of a, of a wishful kind of thought behavior. So if I was to say, uh, I, I hope that the Chicago Bears go undefeated and win the next two or three or even five Super Bowls, I mean, that's a legitimate hope, right? But it's not a, it, it, there's no reason for anyone to believe that they are going to indeed go undefeated and win the next seven, eight, nine, ten Super Bowls, right? Uh, but if I talk about the confident expectation of what God has promised and the fact that my hope or strength is in his faithfulness, I can say uh, my health right now isn't where I'd like it to be, but my hope is in God. And God's word says that through his stripes, uh, I've been healed, right? Uh, his faithfulness is, is paramount to uh, this definition. It has nothing to do so much with me as it is to do with God's faithfulness. And so when we talk about hope, uh, a lot of times hope can spring out of hopelessness. Uh, and I don't know if I'm just speaking for myself or maybe there's someone out there listening. I feel like there's at least one or two people listening that, that can understand where I'm coming from, where their hope uh, sprung out of hopelessness. Uh, for me, uh, there was a time in my life where my sister had passed away. Now, I'm not going to get too deep into the story. The important part is uh, she was very sick, and I was going to, to donate a kidney to her. Uh, before she went into the hospital, before she could go in the hospital and get the kidney operation, she had to have an eye operation. Well, her doctor suggested to her that the eye was in such a bad shape that maybe we should just uh, extract it and be done. If she heals up from that, then we could do the more serious surgery, which is the kidney transplant. So she went into the hospital for that uh, eye extraction and she never came out. So I was devastated. My entire family was devastated. Uh, and I wish I could tell you that, you know, out of that, I gained a great resolve to seek God and, and really throw myself into his word and change the situation of my life. But that would be a complete and utter lie. The truth is, I sank into hopelessness. And it's a very easy thing to do, and I'm sure somebody out there 
uh, can understand where I'm coming from. When you sink into hopelessness, uh, you basically give in to every negative emotion and thought that runs through your mind that comes across your, your, your plate. If somebody says something negative, that's probably right. If somebody uh, mentions something negative, that's probably, if you have a negative thought, that's the way to go. And I don't wanna get into that so much <clears throat> because we, we all know how easy it is to, uh, uh, to go off on a negative trail. But at this time when, when, when my sister passed, I, I felt like it gave me license to give in to all the weaknesses uh, that, that were at my disposal, you know. Um, and it wouldn't be for quite a long time before hope would uh, uh, catch my attention. Uh, and it did catch my attention I can trace it back to uh, this one particular place, and actually it was the day that I met the woman who would become my future wife. She started working at the company I worked at. Now there's a, there's a long involved magical romance that people might get jealous of and want to be a part of, but that's not what I'm here to talk about today. Uh, what I'm really here to talk about is the, the, the mystical, all-encompassing goodness of this biblical hope that we hear about, that we, that we read about, that we search for. How do we distinguish how do we latch on? How do we drink that in? How do we make it part of, of who we are? And, and I've got three, well, it's easy for me to say three very simple steps, uh, but it's, it's, it's an ongoing process. You know, sometimes you'll do uh, some things and you think, man, I'm really, you know, I'm really leaning into the Lord. And then another day, you're like, man, I'm as far away from the Lord as, as I've ever been, and I, I don't know. But through this process, you, I think it, it helps me when, when I feel like I, I'm struggling. It really helps me, and, and I'm hoping that it'll help somebody else out there. Amen? Amen. All right. So the, the first thing is you have to stop believing the lies, right? you you got to stop believing the lies, and, it, and it's... It's, it's much easier said than done, obviously. You know, if you've, if you've started, you know, believing lies, and we've all done it. I know I have. Uh, when, when, uh, when I was young, uh, my, I have a lot of cousins, and, you know, our parents worked a lot, and so my cousins would have to, to drag me wherever, wherever they went, right? And they absolutely hated it because I always wanted to be the center of attention and so they would purposely you know they would they would leave me behind and they would say oh you're too slow you can't keep up you can't ride a bike as good as we can you know you're you're too young you know you don't understand what we're doing you know and, and these are things that really you know, they, they really affected me, and I felt like, you know, maybe I'm just not as, as cool as they are. I'm not as fast, you know, running as they are. I can't ride a bike as good, and, and it really affected me. Even at a young age, it affected how I seen myself. And so that's, that's, that's one thing. You know, when I got into to junior high and high school, Actually, when I got into elementary school and we had to do long division, that was a very tough thing for me. So much so that I, I would just, I would, my mother would try to help me and I would say, I just can't get it. I'm just too dumb. I'm too dumb to get it. I just can't get it. And even as an adult, uh, I tell my wife, I'm not a very handy man. I'm not good with tools, right? 
and I enjoy that she really believes that on the most for the most part even though the truth is no one ever really taught me how to use tools and I never really had an interest in learning it's not that I can't I just chose not to so that's that's what I mean when I say you, you got to stop believing the lies uh, and God's word is very very clear on this uh, Proverbs 3 verse 5 and 6 it says trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding don't lean on your own understanding these are the lies we tell ourselves these are the things that we try to tell ourselves that we know better you know I don't need I don't need this person because I know this I don't need to, to, to give my all to God because of this God never really called me to tithe because of this. I don't have to give money to homeless people because of this. I don't have to give my time because of this. And I say this because these are things that I have said in my life, in my history. I have said these things. You know, maybe you've said some other things. Maybe you've always been very giving and sharing and loving. and You've never had to worry about leaning on your own understanding, but... I have had that problem, and I, and, and I hope someone out there is, is, is understanding that if that's the case, it's okay. We, you know, nobody is perfect, and, and God loves you regardless, but you got to let that go. You know, one of the, the toughest things that I told myself, I had to tell myself when I gave my life to the Lord was, I'm not in control of anything, right? I can't. I can't control how the world sees me. I can't control, you know, these circumstances that are coming at me that are making me feel like I'm less than nothing. But what I can do, what I can control, is who I put my faith in. Am I going to put my faith in myself and try to reason my way out of things? Or am I going to put my faith and my trust in God who has told me that he wants to make my path straight, right? So that's, that's the first, you got to stop believing the lies that you tell yourself. You got to stop relying on your own understanding. Uh, second, uh, is 2 Corinthians 10.5. And that says, we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. And, and this, this is, for, for lack of a better word, this is just an, a, a, an amazing, all-encompassing scripture. Because we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. So we can break that down. What is the knowledge of God? Well, God knows everything. So if we're destroying every argument and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God, that means everything anybody wants to tell you that isn't in the knowledge of God, it's a lie. So we can take God's word and everything that speaks against that and say, well, that's, that's just a lie, right? So... We can stop believing it. Now, the second thing that we have to do is we have to start believing the truth. So you stop believing the lies, but you start believing the truth of what God says. Right? So if God has all the knowledge, then what he says has to be truth, right? Right? I'm sure there's, there's tons of literature from philosophers and scholars that will tell you that, you know, basically the, the scriptures are true and, you know, you should believe all this. But if, but if we're just talking on a person-to-person -person level, you know, I can tell you, hey, you're a, you're a wonderful person. You're a great, you're a great friend. You know, you're a wonderful parent. You're an amazing teacher. You're a superb basketball player, right? And it, it might comfort you for a little while, right? But I don't know everything about you. 
I don't get to spend 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year with you. Uh, so I have a very limited view of who you are, just like you have a very limited view of who I am. But who has a complete view of you, even from the time that you can't remember you? That's God. So if God says something about you, you have to take it as true. And so uh, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31 says, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. So if you wait for the Lord, right? If you wait for the Lord, and basically that means listen and wait for what he has to say to you, what he wants to do in your life, you'll renew your strength. I know I would like my strength renewed sometimes, all the time. Uh, I want to mount up with wings like eagles. I mean, can you imagine when, when things get tough, you wait on the Lord to get wings like eagles and run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. I know I can't be the only one who, uh, who, who, who can just take great strength from just even seeing this verse. Uh, and so that's what you need to, to know that God is trying to tell you, right? Wait on the Lord. Believe what he has to say to you. Now, if we look in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, uh, verses 16 and 17, the third thing is uh, stay in his word. Stay in God's word. Uh, it's easy for me to say, but it, let me just be 100% honest with you. There are days when I wake up and the first thing I tell myself is I need to do my Bible reading for the day. And before you know it, two o'clock in the afternoon has rolled around and I'm still telling myself I need to do my Bible reading for the day. And there are other times where I wake up and I say, I need to do my Bible reading for today. And I'll open my Bible Gateway app and I'll read the verse of the day. And I'll say, I've done my Bible reading for the day. Now, am I proud to say that? No. But is it the truth? Yes. Uh, and the truth is, whatever amount of God's word you can get in every day, that's enough. Now, the truth of the matter is, God wants a complete and total relationship with you, right? And how do you build a relationship? You got to spend time, right? If you, if you want to make it easier to stop believing the lies, if you want to make it easier to start believing the truth, the more time you spend in God's word, the better. Uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is breathed out by God, and it's profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, the training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete equipped for every good work. Now, when it says man of God, obviously it means men or women, you know, but it's, it's just how uh, it was written. But it means everyone, everyone may be complete, equipped for every good work. So what is every good work? Every good work is every good thing that you might think of doing. It comes, it's breathed by, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a reproved by God, you know, so giving time, giving finances, uh, giving clothes, feeding the hungry, you know, whatever, mowing the lawn, whatever good work, that's what the word of God uh, 
is preparing you to do every good work. So whatever, I mean, gee, it means every good work, every good work. Uh, Matthew 4, uh, verse 4 goes on to say, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So this, when I was younger, this scripture used to give me a lot of trouble because, you know, shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. I mean, can you eat the words that come out of God's mouth? I can't see God, and so how do I know what he's... Actually, as a, as a child, it really troubled me, but as I got older... I started to realize there were situations I would get in and I had no no way out of it, you know. Whatever we wanted to do, me and my friends would get into some trouble or we do things that young people probably shouldn't do. Now if I had known what the Bible was saying about me, I would have known better to, to not do those things. So you're it's absolutely true. You can eat as healthy as you like, you know, you know, however you balance your carbs and fruits and proteins. Obviously, you can look at me and tell that I am a, a master at doing that. I'm a genius at, at portion control. However you live your life, however you balance your diet and exercise, that's great. But if, if uh, you're not eating the words of God, if you're not pouring them into you for sustenance and, and, and guidance, you, you might as well, I mean, I, I don't want to, to, to sound harsh or, you know, anything, but you might as well, you, you might as well be eating M&Ms and soda pop all day. Uh, so yeah, you, you have to balance the wisdom of the word of God with your everyday life. You know, there, there's, a, there's something I, I tell myself every day is, is, you know, when I wake up, is today a day that I'm going to use my standard of what I think is right and wrong or am I going to use God's standard of what's right and wrong? And if I choose God's standard, then I have to know what it is. And to know what it is, I have to search it out in his word. So there you go. And, and this last part of, of saying in his word is Romans uh, chapter 10, verse 17. So faith comes from hearing. And hearing through the word of Christ. Again, another amazing scripture. Faith comes from hearing. So, when you hear, that's where your faith comes from. And hearing from the word of Christ. So, Christ gave us hearing. Right? And through the hearing, we got faith. Now, there, I've, I've heard, I think, three or four different interpretations of this scripture. And, and I would have to say that at least three of them are, are by, by men of God who I really respect. And, and, and I truly trust their wisdom on the circumstance. But... Holy Spirit told me what they think is what they think. What do you think? And what I think is when I hear the word of God, it elevates every single part of my character. It, it literally makes me want to, to know more, to do more, to serve more, to preach more, 
so that's that's what I think of when I hear faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ when I hear the word of Christ I want my faith to be more my faith grows more and it makes me want to do the will of Christ even more and so I just, I just want to kind of close uh, by just talking about some, some, some things about myself personally that I've kind of gone through in this, during this time of pandemic and, and you know, sheltering in place. And, you know, it's, it's really been a challenge for me uh, because currently uh, my health is it's at a point to where I, I'm I'm going through some some things to to you know I'm actually filing for uh, disability. I, I had a very extensive spinal surgery, and there you know even though I can walk now, there was a point where I couldn't walk. Uh, even just sitting here for this amount of time is, is very uncomfortable, but. Uh, you know, when I'm by myself, because my wife is, is in the, the healthcare industry, I'm by myself most of the day. I, I, I have to fill out this paperwork by myself, and, and I've had to really uh, come to grips with some, some, some truths about myself and, that I, I wasn't ready to concede. If, if, if I'm being honest, I've always... Uh, for good or bad, taking pride in the fact that I've always been a very strong, capable person. Uh, you know, if something needed to be lifted, if something needed to be moved, you know, I was your guy. And I used to, I, I would tell people, I'll help you move any day, any time, and all that charge is a meal. Um, and, and I was, I was happy to, to do that. Well, since my surgery, I can't do that. Um, to be quite honest, it, it, it's hard for me uh, to even uh, uh, help my wife c carry groceries in from, from the car. Uh, and, and that's something that's it's been very, very tough for me to a admit, not only to others, but, but to, to myself. And... You know, I told my wife, you know, and I didn't even think how the impact of this, this statement would, would affect her or myself, but I, but I told her, you know, if I didn't have the hope of the Lord in my heart during this time, I'm pretty sure I'd be suicidal, right? And I, I said that, and then the, the gravity of it actually hit me because I knew it was true. I knew it was true, and I never thought of myself as, as a suicidal person. And I don't know who is watching this. I don't know what your life has gone through, uh, where, where your life has been or where it's taking you, but I know that you're here watching this for a reason. And, and I just want you to know uh, that when, when my wife heard that, and when I actually heard that, the, the, the first thing we did was pray, right? And then my wife, she sprang into action, you know, she, you know she's talking to, to her boss about possible treatments and chiropractic techniques that might help alleviate pain and, and help to get some mobility in. She's calling, you know, all over the place to try to get some 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 different answers than than what we've had in the past. And even as I'm filming this, uh, tomorrow, uh, which will be Friday, I have an appointment uh, with a doctor to discuss the extent of 
what my disability may or may not be. Now, if I, if I didn't have the Lord in my life, I would be so, so worried. I would, I would be a, a, a wreck, a mess. But I do have the Lord in my life. And even though it, it, I know it's a troubling thing coming and, and this has been a long, trust me, it's been a, a long process. So far, it's been almost a, a three-year process. And there's been a lot of, of low moments. But I can, I can tell you this. The, the truth of the matter is I know that the Lord has made me promises that he'll keep, right? I, I tell people this back isn't my back. When I gave my life to the Lord, it became his back. And so if he, if, he, if, he, if he wants it healed, he'll heal it, right? And he did. He healed it. I can, I can walk. I, this was at a point where I, I could not walk. And, and so I just want to, to leave you with, with that. If you were at a place like I was where, you know, maybe you couldn't, maybe it wasn't you couldn't walk. Maybe you'd lost a job or you lost a family member or, 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 were suffering through drug addiction or, you know, any sort of immorality issues, you know, you just felt like you were less than, I want you to know that you can put your hope in God because it has nothing to do with how much you put into it. It has everything to do with, with his faithfulness, okay? And, and if, if you don't know who your savior is and if you don't know how to put your your trust in in god then i i, I just want you to, to to say this prayer with me you know uh, and just say jesus i've led I've, I've lived my life the wrong way and and i've i've come to a point to where i know that i need and I need the help that only you can give me. And so I ask you today to be my savior. I know that God gave you his only son for me, for my life, for my redemption. And so I trust that you were raised from the dead and you have all authority in heaven and earth to control what goes on in my life. And so I want to give you that control. I want to give you my life. And I thank you and I praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.
free.